morning folks will Diego here it's finally Friday morning the 11th of August we're still down here in beautiful Beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada at the party park on Flamingo Road. I got the wheelchair puller all set up, ready to go here. Got my, my wheelchair. Okay. Uh, it's uh, beautiful this morning. Uh, just a few light scattered clouds around. So nothing like the other morning where it was uh, threatening rain and gray clouds. It was nice and cool that morning. It'll get hotter today. Anyway. <sighs> I'm not too worried this morning about world events. Things look pretty stable. It just all depends on uh, Taiwan. Uh, pissing off China anymore, Russia and uh, Ukraine, North Korea, and crazy Kim Jong Un. Just uh, the world is in balance for the time being. It's still a mess, but I think I'm okay to stay in Vegas for another week or so. <laughs> but. Uh, I'm thinking I've got to get my little aluminum boat going with the 10 horse mercury outboard so I can at least start fishing the bay. That's the main thing. And I'm thinking of uh, getting some car inner tube, uh, the old fashioned inner tubes that go inside the tires. And I'm gonna lash them to the sides of my aluminum boat, kind of like pontoons to make it uh, unsinkable basically yeah it could fill up with water but it'll still float and uh, hopefully long enough to where somebody could rescue me uh, really I want to get out towards the mouth of San Quentin Bay uh, right as the uh, swells right where the swells start developing and okay that's where I want to be it looks extremely uh, nutrient uh, rich over there for all kinds of fish but it is a good like eight to ten miles away from the old mill uh, launching ramp so gotta have a way to get over there and get back hopefully my ten house ten horse mercury two stroke will turn out to be a very uh, good and reliable motor all right folks that's what I'm thinking. That's my story this morning, and I'm sticking to it. Let's head down to Starbucks. My, my claim to fame now that I'm retired from law enforcement is I live in Mexico down uh, two, 200 miles south of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though I'm in a wheelchair, I'm still trying to commercial fish like they do. So the other day I was out for all day, past dusk, catching fish nonstop. And uh, we're after red fish, uh, cod, cod, ling cod, the bottom fish. Most Americans are sports fishing. That's all you hear about. Oh, fishing. I love fishing. It, it, sports fishing is totally different than commercial fishing for the, the weight, the amount of kilos. And uh, they made over a thousand two hundred dollars in their fish that day. 
In one day, that's a pretty good haul for Mexico. No, I, I'm a I'm a cop. I'm a I was a federal agent, and I would rather live in Mexico than up here. Yes, if you don't cross the, uh, you know, wrong people, you're fine. But if you cross them, of course, you got a short life. <laughs> exactly. But I heard it's going more into like the tourism areas. It's heading more into those areas now. So. Well, it's always been pretty heavy tourism, but the uh, cartel does ruin that, you know. Mm. But like Acapulco used to be like thriving tourism. The, the, no, the yeah. And deaths. The cruise boats don't even stop there anymore. It's gotten yeah. so bad. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the economy, the world economy is changing. Uh, more emphasis is coming around to uh, food, you know. Mm food and fish and uh, Mexico is rich in natural resources like that. Mm -hmm. So they're coming up in the world. 15 years ago, when I first uh, started living in Mexico, the average wage was only like, it was less than $20 a day, mm -hmm. more like 10. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to $50 a day is normal. Mm -hmm. So it's coming up in the world. People need to eat, they need that food. You know, yeah, we fish the boats, the only way to go, yeah. And the, the most productive, of course, is a netting, mm -hmm. but I hate netting because it kills the fish, mm -hmm. they're dead when they get tangled in that net. They drown, right? Yeah, they could be dead for a day or two, so they and they're, they're not very good, you know. Mm -hmm. But we catch them with a uh, long line, mm -hmm. each hook is baited, we set it down on the bottom 300 feet down. And then you crank and you crank and you crank. And you could have 20 huge fish on those that line when it comes up. And you just unhook them, throw them in the ice. Then you hook up meat, bait, and send it down again. Uh, it's just amazing how many fish are down there. So it's got to be pretty, uh, pretty like sandy bottom. It's not cold or anything. No, there's, there's, it's a rocky bottom. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta pull your, you hit bottom, then you pull it up, so it oh, so kind of floats, floats, floats over the rocks, oh. and there's just schools of fish layered in there. The cod is the most, uh, you know, f fish and chips is stuff like that made yeah. with cod. Yeah, that's what we used to have, a lot of cod back room. Right, oh, yeah, <laughs> you guys are the experts. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> South Padre Island. That's it, yeah. Right, right. No, yeah. All over. yeah. But what's funny is uh, I'm the oldest of eight children, raised in the middle, and all of us had pretty good jobs. You know, I was in law enforcement. My brothers and sisters are in the postal off postal service, UPS. You know, uh, teaching, pretty mainstream jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Ray, <laughs> he he uh, dropped out of college to become an entertainer. You know, and he's like clowning around, going to clown college with Ringling Brothers down in Florida. And, you know, he pop, he would pop up here and there at the, in the circus. And, and his dad said, get a job. Go down, <laughs> don't go down to Roar and get a job. He would tell him. Yeah. He's done as good as anyone. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And the, the aerospace jobs all closed up down there. And Ray's going stronger than ever. <laughs> yep. He followed his dream. And... That's it, yeah. My mom was real supportive of me. She was like, okay. Because I did all sorts of weird, crazy stuff, treasure hunting and stuff. Before. Oh, yeah. And then I went traveling around the world, and then one day I rang my mom and I said, Mom, I'm going to be a street performer. And she's Ooh. like, Oh, at last, you got yourself a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> she meant it. She was yeah, happy. Was she was real happy. Get over there. The show must go on. Ray forgot to get his stepdaughter, handicapped stepdaughter, so he's got to run. And uh, we're getting ready to, to fire her off. Yeah, it's a lack of podium, then, right? Yeah, it's a lack of podium. Okay, okay. Let's go, white gas, huh? White gas on the whip. Uh, 
very interesting couple just got back from a huge long trip in Mongolia. Yep. Okay, folks. Getting ready to play with some fire here. I don't know what that is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Ray is not here to go over everything. Okay, we'll see what's going on here in a minute. We're going to get a couple of chairs for the person. Daniel. I think they're okay, Ma. Okay. You're playing Larry yet? No, that's Ray's, yeah. It's over there. There we go, yeah, okay. Good job, Daniel. That was not the way that was supposed to be. <laughs> I'm going to have gloves and we'll do a better foot out. Okay. This America's Got Talent is new. Got some rain coming down, folks.
Okay, folks. At least we got that on tape, video. Hopefully, Ray wants to check it out when he gets back. All right. Good job.